Welcome to Garlic Jim's Famous Gourmet Pizza's training video focusing on dough management. Today our focus is uh, proper slap technique. Did you already start it? What we need to do as a company is to create better speed and higher quality pizzas starting from this process here. The objective to a great slap is no bubbles. Uh, that's our, our, our main objective here. And you'll notice that when my fingers press down on the dough ball, uh, I, I make one pass. I'm hitting hard on the on the surface, and I'm getting all the air out of the the edge, and I'm pushing it towards the center. Uh, here you'll notice I'm not edge stretching. I'm simply defining what I call the cheese valley. I'm leaving all the dough there in the middle. For that's the portion I'm going to slab. I'm not slapping the edges, I'm slapping the center, and I'm quarter turns as I slap. It's important that we get all, leave all the dough there in the middle. You don't want to edge stretch anything or stretch the middle. Here you'll notice that we've got uh, the same technique, um, just a, the air bubble in the middle there is more drastic. Uh, and again, that has to do with how I'm holding my hands and I'm focused on getting all that air into the middle. I've stretched, all I'm going to stretch, creating a cheese valley and getting all my air in the middle and then having a nice mound of dough in the center. Again, same thing, just really focusing on developing my crust, trying to get all the air out. You'll see a little air bubble there that we need to clip off. That will blow up in the in the oven. You'll see it there again. Uh, I didn't quite get it. The point here is is to get all the air out. Focus on the middle there. That way, you don't have any air bubbles when it goes to the oven. Here you'll see that we've used a sharpie to accentuate the the, the purpose of what we're trying to do, and that is curl the crust. You want that crust to actually curl up. Notice my hands, it's a flat surface. Now I'm rotating, I'm pushing down and back ever so slightly, creating that, that edge. And that's the port. When I flip it, that's the part that's going to brown real nice. The other side is going to burn due to exposure to the air. This side has no exposure to the air. It's porous. All the air can escape. Here, the purpose of this is to demonstrate the rotation. I'm not stretching. I'm simply rotating, trying to create what I call the cheese valley. The cheese valley is crucial. to. You don't want to have those toppings fall in your lap when you bite into the pizza. Here is a, a prime example of what not to do. Um, you, you'll see a lot of this. First of all, our hands are not, uh, they're straight up and down. We're not at an angle and we're not getting the proper curl of the crust. We've left a lot of indents and those will create bubbles. Here you'll see an improper way to stretch. That we're pulling all of our dough out of the center. Now we're docking, which some folks do this in other pizza restaurants. We do not do this here at Garnet Gems. This is the improper way to slap. Again, there's no angle to my fingers. I'm, it's not a flat surface. You'll see indents everywhere, and those will potentially be holes. Now, this is just, I can't stress enough how obnoxious this is. You're pulling all your dough out of the middle. You have uh, thin spots throughout, and too much dough on your crust. Those stretching marks there will leave bubbles all around your crust, is it, all, all around the crust edge. There are proper ways to pull dough balls out and improper ways to pull dough balls out. This is the proper way to do it. You want to pull it out nice and easy, clip the edges, and then use the dough knife for what it's intended for. There is an improper way to snatch that dough ball out of that tray. You do not want to push it to the point where it turns into a half dough ball. You want to pull the tray towards you position it so you're always pulling 
towards your body, not away from your body. Again, another prime example of what not to do. Here's another great example of not what to do. Do not push the dough ball away from you. Always pull it towards you. Get underneath it and pull it out. You'll see here, what when I, when I say pull, I don't mean it literally pull. This is a prime example of pulling it uh, too much. You really want to let the dough knife do its work here. He's clipping the edge. That way we're not creating what's called a dog ear or bunny ears. You want to leave those. Um, here again is the proper way to slap or edge lock your pizza. Get that air out of there. The purpose of what we're doing here is to get all your air out of the dough ball. Edge stretch. Again, I'm not necessarily stretching. I'm creating that cheese valley. I'm defining my edges. Here's that proper curl of the crust. I call this the rebirth. You really need to make sure you get the new dough exposed and up to the top. When you flip it over, that's the portion that's going to brown nicely for your pizza crust. All the more reason not to have cheese in your crust. You work so hard to get a great looking pizza, you don't want cheese in your crust or sauce for that matter. Here you'll notice again the uh, usage of the marker. Um, this really accentuates the purpose and that is to get the unborn dough up to the air, up to the light. Here is a quarter turn slap technique. This is the, again, the only te uh, technique we use here at Garlic Gems. Slap that out, quarter turns, three, four slaps the most. If it takes more than that, your dough is too cold. 50 to 60 degree dough is what you need to be using. Again, here's the proper way to slap out a, a dough ball. Edge stretch, define your crust, quarter turns on the slap. You don't want any overhang, an eighth of an inch at the most. If it's too big, bring all the dough onto the tray and then pull out the remainder that's in the middle so there's no creases here again you don't want to jeopardize the thickness of the crust so be gentle with the crust stretch it out never put in a dough ball that is short on the tray or on the screen here you'll notice a proper way to spin if you have to spin at all there's a proper way to do it and an improper way to do it that's the proper way to spin your pizza dough. The point here is to show that it should be a speed technique. It's not a show technique. There's a lot of folks out there that will just throw it up in the air for fun. You're wasting time. We're in the business of speed. We're gourmet right away. Spin it, throw it down on your screen, sauce it, and move on to the next one. Again, sauce it, and slap it out in less than 30 seconds. Here what we try to do is show you what an improper way to actually throw it up in the air. That's doing absolutely nothing. That's slowing us down as a system and that's not getting the pizza out to the customer as fast as we can. That's wasting time. Do not do that. And when you do that you have a tendency of over slapping and over stretching your dough. And that's a great example of what just happened. Here you'll see uh, all the dough, all the sauce right there in the center, and you should have three or four circular motions. Fan it out, but again, it's four ounces of sauce in the middle. It's a proper way to pull out your thin crust and an improper way to pull out your thin crust. The same technique you use with your thick crust. Here what we tried to do is to show you that 
Use the sheeter for what it is. The sheeter is supposed to sheet your crust to the size of your screen. All you should have to do at this point is to shape it and then dock it. You should not be slapping out your thin crust. That creates inconsistencies. Dock your dough. Do not stretch it after this. You'll create those holes there will become larger. Sauce will seep through those holes. Cheese will seep through the holes and your crust will stick to the, the screen. And during a Friday night, that's the last thing you want. Here you'll see the, the we, we threw it over there um, onto the screen. 